Hello, and thank you so much for tuning into A Voice for All. I am your host, Jamila Gamble, and as always, I am so glad that you are tuning in. If you do not know, this is season four, and we are off to a great start. If you'd like to connect with me, be sure to join me on the Jam Fan page, uh, facebook.com forward slash Miss Jam Gamble, and join the hashtag A Voice for All movement. So A V F A movement. We love to hear from you, and you could also connect with me on Twitter at Miss Jam P C C S. So on today's episode, um, I feel like in previous episodes of A Voice for All, we haven't really touched base on learning disabilities and one's journey through you know, having a learning disability. So I'm very honored to have Shakira Rouse here to talk about her journey being an advocate um, and now an up and coming business owner yes. with Special Compass. So welcome to A Voice for All. Thank you. We are so glad to have you. How did this all begin? How did the, if the diagnosis, where did it all start for you? Um, I think it really started for me after I, after I graduated at university. Okay. So in university, I had the I was struggling a lot with my schoolwork, mm -hmm. and I didn't understand why. And it was only when I confided in a friend that she told me that I should go to the disability council mm. service, and that's when um, I started to get support and realized there was a lot of information that I didn't receive making that transition from high school to university. Um, so when I graduated, after I graduated university, I decided mm -hmm. to go back to school and when I, I decided to take a minor in inclusive education, so okay. focusing on special education. Mm -hmm. And that's when like ev all the information came hitting me. It was just like, oh, <laughs> the, yeah, it was like <laughs> the, all the answers just came to me mm -hmm. and I started putting the pe missing puzzle pieces together mm -hmm. of uh, my journey. Um, so. I vowed from that moment, like I don't want another student to have to experience the same right. uh, experience and frustration that I went through. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I wanted to help make a change for other students. So you're saying it kind of peaked in university. Was there any kind of red flags when you were in elementary school or high school? So um, in elementary school, I was diagnosed with a learning disability, but I never understood what that meant or what my learning disability was. Oh, okay. Um, it was my mom that ex made the definite explain to me what my learning disability was, and mm -hmm. that was the only definition I had carried out with me through my whole life. So um, I didn't really. She explained it to me that I learned about if, for one, if the teacher t uh, teaches a lesson about the dog one week, and the next week we learn about the cat. When we go back to the th week three to talk about the dog, it's like I forgot. Okay. A lot I learned about the dog, so that was the only definition I carried for my whole life, and. I struggled in like math and a little bit of my grammar and writing, and but it was enough to get by. But right. like I said, it really hit me in mm -hmm. university, and I couldn't understand. Even like some of my professors couldn't understand why I was uh, struggling so hard because it was like the student that articulates themselves so well in class, it's is not coming across. It's not coming across in their writing or in their exams. So you would say that your university professors were at least compassionate, or d were some of them a little bit just kind of dismissive? Some were compassionate and some were not compassionate. Um, I had one professor actually make a comment to me that made me question if I was in the right program oh. or if university was right for me. I had others offer um, help and support and let, like, they told me that I'm always here for you if you need help. Right. But I think uh, collectively, I just don't think they had that training in terms of like, let's say, special education mm -hmm. to kind of understand the science and say, you know what, Shakira, maybe you should go over here to get some help and get some services. Right. So when you had this diagnosis, did you feel that challenges were going to be coming your way or did you just say, OK, you know, I learned differently moving on? It was more like I learned differently moving on. Okay. And I kind of feel that when I, so it was like a 20 page report and I was just reading all the information wow. to that report and I feel like, oh, this is why I have a hard time with math. This is why I struggle with my grammar. It was like. So you were happy in a way. So it, I was happy, yeah. Okay. Because it finally, it added to the uh, definition that my mom gave to me. Mm. And it gave it, it further explained things to me. So it, like it further explained how I think. Right? Okay, good, good. So um, it was, yeah, so it really explained to me how I think, and it just like answered all these unknown questions for mm -hmm. so long. So it was a it was moment of clarity. Yeah, it was clarity. Good. And the reason why I ask you that, because I find sometimes people, when they get a diagnosis or their, or their parents get a diagnosis, they're like, oh my goodness, that's it. 
my child will never amount to this, my child will never be able to do that. But you're kind of proving that that whole belief wrong with what you're doing today. So tell us more about what you're now getting into. So now I'm getting into Special Compass. Um, it's an educational resource center for mm -hmm. students with special needs. Okay. So I focus on not only educating uh, students, but parents as well. Mm. Helping parents to realize what they need to know when it comes to, let's say, IEP and what they're entitled to in terms of um, advocating for their son or daughter. That's a very stressful thing <laughs> for parents. Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, I can only imagine like what my mom had to go through. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to let not only students and parents and even other educators know that there's different ways in terms of, let's say, helping students uh, learn math yes. or helping students advocate for themselves. And that's a big thing I don't think a lot of people realize is self-advocating. Mm -hmm. And for a parent, spends most of the time advocating for their child when they're in elementary school. But when it comes to university right. that, or post-secondary education, your, your son or daughter is considered an adult, so you can't have any say. True. So you, it's really important that as parents are advocating for their children, right. that they learn to help teach them to advocate for themselves. Very good point. That's, that is a very true point because it's, <laughs> I, I see it. There's that overbearing parents, you know, this is his abilities. He can't do that. Let him do this. And then when they're left to go and swim in the pool by themselves, it's like, yeah, you know, they're kind of drowning a little bit. Exactly. Good. So basically you are creating a transition yes. plan for them. Okay. Um, a transition plan, a whole bunch of different workshops as well too. I also want to help uh, students kind of like help them learn to uh, discover how they learn. Right. So every like we, we learn all learn differently. Exactly. That's what learning disability is. We learn differently. Mm -hmm. So how about let's find ways to help you study better and help you input information better and help you remember information better. So whatever we're gonna do with that through dance or song or visual arts, however, we're gonna help you train you. It's funny you bring that up because when I was going through high school and college, food is actually what, I and no joke, like I, I don't know if it was just to help with my anxiety, oh, okay. with, with tests, I had to be eating yeah. something. So that's, that's how I learned. That's interesting. <laughs> I realized that I'm a visual person, mm -hmm. and I remember when I was in school that I would listen to the teacher, but I'll be constantly doodling on my mm. notebooks. Even now, when I have to study, I, I can't be in a room of uh, loud silence. I have to have music on. I have to have like something going on in the background to kind True. of just zone in and focus my thoughts and like, memory. So, and I love how you touched base on how everybody learns differently, and and that may be you know, how the information's presented or their environment. And sometimes it also includes who is teaching them. Exactly. Right? Because unfortunately we do have some teachers out there who, you know, they're very cut and dry. This is the lesson, now, now learn it. But you know, they're not realizing that you have to incorporate different elements to kind of stimulate different, the exactly. learning. Yeah, everyone processes information differently. Everyone receive it differently. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe that when it comes to education and teaching that there's one cut formula. Right. Um, and then also too, we gotta be think about that teachers are humans. So some of them, you know, may not know the best way to help a visual learner learn or True. auditory learn learn, right? So True. I think it's just try your best mm -hmm. and I just feel just be open minded to different things. Love and that. Yeah. So what's the next steps for special compass? Special Compass, we'll be launching our uh, some workshops. Like I said, the workshops for parents on IEP and self-advocating, mm -hmm. as well as the same workshops for uh, mm -hmm. students in that transition from like high school to university. Um, we'll be launching those in September, nice. after school season. Perfect so time. time. <laughs> Perfect time. Um, with some of the parents you may have met, what are some of their frustrations you find that they're expressing to you? I find the frustration with parents is that they feel helpless and they feel like mm. uh, they're alone mm -hmm. um, I feel that uh, they're helpless and alone and discouraged because they go they're trying to their best to find helps and solutions for their child and it's just like everyone there's another obstacle there's another right. burden or there's we're on a waiting list and there's this and there's yeah. that so I feel like parents are becoming frustrated and just tired and weary mm -hmm. and they and then obviously the child's affected and like I said, I feel like the big thing is that they 
feel like they're alone. And I think that's an important thing with Special Compass and like that community. I want everyone to realize that you're not alone in mm -hmm. this. Absolutely, and, and that's what we need. We need yeah. more <laughs> groups like this. So if there are any teachers or maybe university professors who are watching, what, what's something you would love for them to know about maybe that student in their class who has all this potential but hasn't had a chance to really let it all out? Um, I would say to continue to motivate and encourage them. Mm -hmm. um, it's very in important to be careful of the words you use when you're a teacher. Um, so I would just can say, you know, be, do the best you can to yeah. help them and support them and encourage them and help them discover their strengths. Because I think that sometimes we forget that students be can be, um, they become a little reserved to themselves and down on the heart on themselves. But if they see that, you know what, a teacher has yeah. sees potential in me, maybe I should take a look and see potential in myself, and the two of you work together and discover that student's strengths, I think that will help them 100% a lot. Perfectly summarized. <laughs> and and the reason why I brought Shakira on the show is, one, she has a, a new business that's coming out, so obviously we have to promote that. Um, but oftentimes we focus so much on young students who have a learning disability, and we forget that they grow up and they continue to have that learning disability. So it's absolutely essential that when you're creating your transition for your child, that you're not just stopping where they are right now. Realize that there is potential that lies way ahead of them. Find out what makes them tick. Find out what makes them learn and realize that if it's not coming out right now, that it may come out a little bit later. Just give it some time. So thank you so much, Shakir, for being on A Voice For All. After the break, we have way more to talk about when it comes to learning disabilities. Be sure to stay tuned right after the break. Welcome back to The Voice for All. I'm your host, Jamila Gamble. We are continuing our discussion on learning disabilities, but this time we are touching base on dyslexia. And here to educate us on what is happening in the world of dyslexia is fashionista, <laughs> Janelle McCoy. Multiple titles, we actually have to summarize it oh, wow. so they could fit at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much. I am glad to be here. Exactly, I am so glad to have you because in my ignorance, I don't feel like I have learned a lot about dyslexia. So I'm bringing you on like my experts. Okay. <laughs> you know, for you to educate the masses on what we need to know when it comes to dyslexia. So what are you doing to, to get that word out? Well, let's just start off by saying I was diagnosed with dyslexia at 23 years old. It was something that I knew that I had all of my life. I just didn't have an mm. actual name for it. Um, went through school, I failed college at least four times. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Money. Yes. That's, that's me. And that's when I found fashion. So I was able to express myself through wardrobe and that helped me build the confidence and to mm -hmm. just really stand up for myself. I decided to go back to school in 2006. Okay. And um, this time I got into the fashion management program, which I was so happy for. And mm -hmm. um, I went to a guidance counselor and basically told her, you know what? I want to find out what's going on. I'm failing all of my classes before. I don't want to complete the same cycle. And, and that's spend more she, money. Exactly. And that's when um, she, um, she brought in a psychologist in. They tested me and then found out that I have dyslexia. So I basically received the tools to help me succeed through college, like like little study tools, as in writing in colored pens and oh, oh yes, so oh, I yes. do that. <laughs> <laughs> Those things stimulate my mind yeah. and other dyslexics. Also, um, I can't study in a room that is silent. I have to have music around because mm. music stimulates my mind. Mm -hmm. So I would study with instrumentals, and then the next day it would be a song in my head. Do you feel like you have to eat while you're studying? You know what? Probably. Me here and there. Too. Here and there. I love food. So you know what? <laughs> 
<laughs> I would, <laughs> you're not the only Good. one. Good. But yes, yeah, so um, years went by and so forth. And um, mm -hmm. once I was diagnosed, I graduated with A's and B's. I was nominated for valedictorian. I got an internship in New York City at BET Television Network. Bravo. Came back and um, decided to become a wardrobe stylist for film and TV. Mm -hmm. So I was working in that industry for about two to three years. Yeah. And now I'm a visual display artist and recently a dyslexia advocate. Okay, there's the show. <laughs> Thank you for being on The Voice for All. We just summarized everything. Yes. But I love how you took your passion for fashion, Yes. but you also realized that there was an underlining issue. And I feel sometimes people like ignore that. There is there is a problem. There is something that is preventing them from tapping into all of their potential. And they might ignore it, but you said, no, no. No, no. I had a very strong mother and father. My mother is just very determined. I remember her knocking on doors, in like speaking to guidance counselors and teachers. It's right. just like, what is going on? But there, because I wasn't a disruptive child and so on, they were just like, oh, you know what? She's just shy. She was yeah. not motivated and so forth. And even when I was in high school, even when I went to college, mm -hmm. my mom was just like, no, just keep going, keep going. So I have that fire in me. I had to Good. keep going no matter what. As an advocate, you need to have that fire in exactly. you. But you said that you always felt it all along. What, besides your, your failing grades, made you realize that maybe something was going on? Well, I would look into, there was a times when, and I actually, um, saw an episode of Whoopi Goldberg on YouTube, and um, she was talking about how she would look on, um, on the um, chalkboard, mm -hmm. and it would be a, pretty much a blur to her. And the teacher would be like, she wouldn't be, it's almost like they thought that she wasn't listening or she wasn't paying attention. Right. And I remember being that exact same person. It's almost like I'm looking, and it's like a deer in headlights. Mm. And no matter how much I listened, no matter how much I would write it down, it just wasn't clicking. I didn't learn how to tie my shoelaces until I was maybe about 12 years old. I didn't learn left and right until I was about maybe 21. So little things like that really showed that, you know what, something may be off. And how does that affect your, your confidence, especially if you're 21 and you don't know <laughs> left from right. Oh God, it, it affected my confidence a whole lot, to be very mm. honest with you. Like, the thing about it is I tried to hide it so much, and that's what made me look even more crazy. The fact that I knew yeah. that there was something going on, and I was like, you know what, I'm not gonna tell anybody. I'm just gonna pretend like I know it all, and at the end of the day. So you're like at a concert, and they're like, left, right, and you're like, I'm you're like, the only person <laughs> exactly the other way. Yep, exactly. What's up with her? <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Okay, <laughs> okay. And, but you bounce back from that. Yep. And, and that's why we have you on because I'm sure there's parents who are watching and maybe their child is not reaching those milestones. And again, that worry kicks in, that you know, doubt kicks in about their potential. With all the speaking engagements you do, what would you say to those parents? To never give up. And, and I know it's such a simple statement. It but really, really is, it really is, but that's something that has always stuck with me always keep going. Mm. There is light at the end of the tunnel. And what I've realized, there's so many entertainers, musicians, actors, actresses that are dyslexic. And have name, you made it name a few for oh, us. Goodness I know you've been, you've been interviewing some. Oh yes, um, Sir Richard Branson, which hopefully I'll interview one day. Mm -hmm. Whoopi Goldberg, Selma Hayek. Um, really? Yes. Yes, it's crazy. It's crazy. Muhammad Ali, Maya Angelou, <laughs> like get out. Yep, yeah, the list goes on. The list goes wow. on, and that's just by researching and finding out that these people have dyslexia keeps me motivated uh -huh. and just really shows that you know what, I'm gonna make a difference. I really have to let the world know that right. this is a situation and there needs to be more light. On it. So with this motivation, what's the next steps? What can we expect from you? Because I have expectations. <laughs> Let's put that out there. Well, a lot of other speaking engagements. Um, I'm actually thinking about doing one in the States. So that's in the works. Mm -hmm. And just being that self 
advocate, being that um, dyslexia advocate, and just going around. And um, I actually have a web, like the website I was just speaking about, JinyaMcCoy.com, mm -hmm. where it shows my life as a dis visual display artist and a costume designer. And I also shed light on people with other learning disabilities, not just dyslexia, okay. but other That's things as know. well, and shine light on them. And um, basically, just show where they went. Um, and how are they able to overcome certain obstacles in their life to give yeah. other people hope, like little young girls, little young boys. Well, you know, you mentioned little young girls and boys, but you were diagnosed at 23. Exactly. So how many adults, you know, are out there who may be carrying this burden yes. of shame? You know, like what would you say to those people who might be watching and they, they have that burden, they, they don't know what to do. And it's funny you say that because ever since I started this website, so many <laughs> adults have come up to me and be like, what, like, how were you able to overcome that? Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's just about owning your truth and asking for help. That's like my number one thing. There are resources out there. Like there's the Learning Disability Association. They yes. have one in Ontario, they have one in the States, and they've been extremely helpful. Okay, so suggestions for how you find works for you when you're learning. You said colored pens, what else? Music. What other strategies do you use to kind of get you going that maybe other people could use as well? Well, those two really help me because color stimulates my mind. What about post-its? Post-its? I can't touch the yellow ones. I could only do like the yeah, topical colors. <laughs> no, it's just yeah. not stimulating to me. Yeah. The other pretty the colors. pinks and the greens. And I just so feel so motivated to work. Yes, definitely. Good, I'm not the only one. And okay. that's where the whole wardrobe thing comes into play because I love color and whatever I wear, that gets my confidence going. And Absolutely. Make, yes. Yes. Appearance is everything. Appearance is definitely and everything. And you know what, though? For all we know, maybe someone may look at you and they're like, wow, va 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 boom, but they would never know that there's you and know, that's you have the dyslexia. Thing. When I came out last year, people were just like, what? Like, you have dyslexia. I'm like, yeah. You're playing. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. Like, but then you know what? Then that speaks to our ignorance towards invisible disabilities. Exactly. Ex you look fantastic. So, what? People who look fantastic can't have something wrong with them? Exactly. But only people who look a certain way, that's the only people who could have something wrong with them? Like, what, what kind of world are we? No, it's true. And that's, we living in? and that's why the whole website and me being that advocate really shines through because people look at me and think that I would never have a learning disability. And I actually do. Yeah. And I'm proud of it. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a part of my life, just like fashion is a part of my life. Sensitive question, perhaps. We have sure. just a minute left. Mm -hmm. Would you say that certain communities, demographic communities, have a certain attitude towards labels such as dyslexia or learning disability. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. And Absolutely. what advice would you give to them who, you know, they don't want their cousins or their family to know that something is wrong with their child? At the end of the day, like I was saying before, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so much resources out there. Yeah. If you're if you be quiet about it, no one will ever know that you need the help. Very true. And you will go on with your life just wondering and just being in that bubble and so forth. Bubble. Yes, that the bubble. Bubble. <laughs> on this episode of A Voice for All, we have touched base on learning disabilities. And again, it's an invisible disability. It's something that people don't like to talk about because if you can't see it, we shouldn't know about it. I encourage you, if you are seeing red flags that maybe there is something that is wrong with your child or perhaps even you as an adult, you are doing yourself nothing ignoring that. You have to act on it. You have to seek that help and do not be embarrassed by seeking help because maybe there's that potential that's trapped within you. And if you take that first step to get out there, ask the right questions, meet fantastic people who could you know, help you along with the journey, you will see that it will benefit you in the long run. So if you would like more information on um, Janelle, her information is at the bottom of the screen. Be sure to connect with her, um, especially if you're someone who, you know, maybe you yourself have dyslexia and you just don't know who to connect with. Here's somebody right here. So thank you so much for being on The Not Voice a for problem. All. This has been another amazing episode. I will catch you guys next week. Be sure to tune in and be sure to connect with me if you have any questions, show content. I would love to hear from you. Thank you for tuning in. Have an awesome week and I will see you guys next time.